Hello, Algebra 1 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. And today I'm going to teach you about parent functions and function transformations. This information is so important, and it's actually not in your journals. So what I want you to do, please, is take out a piece of binder paper and take notes on what I'm doing today. And then I would like for you to either glue or tape this information into your journals so that it's easily available for you all year long, because I will be referring to it often during the year. I'm going to start with all of the different parent functions that are out there. My first parent function is f of x equals some constant k. So for example, if you had f of x equals 2, that would be a horizontal line crossing at 2. So I'm going to put a point here, and it would be that way. So in this function, so this is f of x equals 2. So in this equation, uh, the input, it doesn't matter what my input is going to be. It could be negative 100. It could be positive 100 way over here. It could be negative 2. It could be 0. It could be 4. It doesn't matter what we input. Our output is always going to be the same. It's always going to be 2. So for this parent function here, f of x equals k, it's always going to be a horizontal line crossing the y-axis at that number k. So this would be my y-intercept here. The second parent function that I want to expose you to is f of x equals x. So this is a very common parent function that you see. This function is a line that has a y-intercept of 0, and it has a perfect diagonal slope going in both directions. So in other words, it has a slope of 1, and that can be found here. It's an invisible one. And it has a y-intercept of 0 because there isn't a y-intercept there. So that's your basic parent function for the line. The next parent function is f of x equals the absolute value of x. And hopefully you remember from we've already done absolute values. This basic function would cross would be the vertex would be at 0, 0, and it would be a perfect diagonal going up this way, and then it would be a perfect diagonal going up the other way. So this one has a vertex. It's a V-shaped function. Vertex is the name of the point that changes direction. So it comes down, it stops here, it changes direction, and goes back up the other way. The next parent function that we have is f of x equals x squared. So if you plug in 0, 0 squared is 0, so it's going to be there. 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 squared is also 1. 2 squared is 4. And then we have that on the other side. 3 squared is 9. So you'll see what happens here. This time it creates a nice U shape. And so this type of function here that has a square on it, anytime you see x squared, it's always going to be u-shaped. And it also has a vertex. It has a place where it comes down and stops and then goes back up the other way. So this is called a quadratic function. OK, I have two more parent functions for you. This first one is f of x equals 2 to the power of x. So this is going to be an exponential function. So we start at, if I put in 0, 2 to the power of 0 is 1. And then I come up here to 2. And then 2 squared is 4. And 2 to the power of 3 is all the way up here at 8. And then it would go to 16. And then if we go the other direction, we're going to have it each time. So it gets closer and closer and closer to that x-axis, but it never actually touches the x-axis, and then it gets exponentially bigger going the other direction. So this is called an exponential function. Our last function is f of x equals the square root of x. So the square root of 1, or square, let's start with 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 9 is 3. Now, you cannot do the square root of a negative number. So the square root of negative 1 is actually uh, the uh, letter I, which stands for imaginary. And we'll get to that in a little later in the chapter. So you cannot have negatives under the square root. Uh, so that means that this function is just going to be going in this direction here. And once again, this is called a square root function. Okay, so now we're going to move on to function transformations. 
So I think the best way to do this is first we're going to, I'm going to show you an example of shifting either left, right, and up and down. So we're going to start with this parent function, absolute value of x, and then we're going to shift it. And you'll notice that this is still an absolute value function, but I have a plus 4 on the inside of the function, and I have a minus 3 on the outside of the function. So let's talk about this one first. Okay, so what you see, can see in front of you here is I opened up Desmos.com and went to the graphing calculator, and I put in the absolute value of x, which you can see here in red. That's my parent function. And then I did the other one, which is x plus 4 inside the absolute value and then minus 3. So what you can see that happened here is that we're now, our vertex is changed. So our vertex is now at negative 4 comma negative 3. So hopefully you can see that from our um, function up here, the negative 4 comes from this plus 4. So this means that it shifted uh, left 4 units. And then the minus 3 means that it shifted down 3 units. And that will always happen whenever you are adding or subtracting a number inside the function, it's going to shift it left and right. And you'll notice that it shifts it the opposite that it says. So if it says plus 4, it's going to go to the left. That means if it said minus 4, it would go to the right. If you add an, or subtract a number on the outside of the function, it's going to shift it up and down. So in this case, because it's minus 3, it goes down. If it was plus 3, it would go up. So here's our basic rule so far. If you start with your just parent function f of x, and then you take your same function, and you subtract a number on the inside or add a number on the inside, this is going to shift it left and right. And then if you add or subtract a number on the outside of the function, that's going to shift it up or down. OK, so now we're going to continue with our same two functions that we had on the previous page. But this time, I'm going to add a new function, which is multiplying by 2 on the outside of the function. OK, so here's my same two Desmos graphs. My red one is my parent function of just plain old uh, absolute value of x. My blue one is where I shifted it uh, left 4 and down 3. And now I've added a green one, which is the same exact function that we had in the blue, except for this time we multiplied by a number 2 on the outside. So this time it's the same as that blue function, except for it's a little bit skinnier. So what happens when you multiply by a number on the outside of the function is that it's going to vertically compress or stretch. And also, if it's negative, it's going to reflect upside down in the x-axis. OK, so our rule, now we're going to add something to our rule. So if we start with our parent function, f of x, if we multiply by something on the outside, that will be a vertical compress or stretch and it will reflect upside down in the x-axis. If we add or subtracting something on the outside of the function, again, remember these are both outside, and so everything's vertical when it's done on the outside. So this is a vertical compressor stretch. This is a vertical up or down. When you do something on the inside of the function, it's always going to be horizontal instead. So in this case, it'll be adding or subtracting left and right. OK, the last type of transformation is when you're multiplying by something on the inside of the function. So you'll notice what I did here is I have all three of the same that we started with. But now this time I multiplied by 0 0.3. And you'll notice that this purple one, what happened is that it it became a lot wider and it moved away from the y-axis. And so basically what happened is it horizontally compressed or stretched. OK, so now we have all of the rules put together. So here I have my function f of x, OK? And I have some things that I've done to it. Anything that's done inside the function is always going to be a horizontal something. The number that you're multiplying by inside is going to be a horizontal compressor stretch. The number that you're adding or subtracting inside is going to be a horizontal shift left and right. The number that you're multiplying on the outside of the function and the number that you're adding on the outside of the function, those are always going to be vertical, up and down. So the number that you're multiplying by will be your 
vertical compressor stretch, the number that you're adding or subtracting on the outside of the function will be your vertical up and down. If this number on the outside of the function is negative, it will be a vertical reflection, so that would be flipped over the x-axis. If this number is negative, it will be a horizontal reflection, so it will be flipped over the y-axis. All right, that was a lot of information. Like I said at the beginning of the lesson, I hope you take, took really good notes. Please put this in your journal, either tape it in or glue it in to the front or the back so that it's easily accessible. We will be thinking and talking about this all year long. Thanks for watching.